got a head start tearing her down. And our first job is to remove the stock turbo and exhaust manifold. To provide some more airflow for our ramp and boost the power, we're going to be doing what's called a second gen swap. What this means is we're moving the placement of the turbo from the lower rear of the engine to the center using an exhaust manifold designed around second gen Dodge Ram trucks from 94 to 02. There are a few benefits to doing this, and the main one is being able to use a divided exhaust manifold to better capture the exhaust pulses from the engine, which reduces spool up time and allows us to fit a larger and more durable S400 frame turbo. This is a Fleece Performance second gen swap kit, and it's actually one of the more complete kits that you can buy out there. And what sets it apart is all the fittings and plumbing that come with it. That way you don't have to lose time running back and forth to the parts store. Now, of course, it comes with a turbo oil feed and drain line, but it also comes with cooling fittings. And what really sets it apart are the new AC lines that keep everything out of the way of the manifold. Speaking of which, this kit is based around a Steed Speed T4 divided flange exhaust manifold, and connected to it will be a fleece Borg Warner S467 turbo. Now, this particular unit will support just shy of 800 horsepower at the wheels, but if you really want to get crazy with your Cummins, this kit will work with any S400 style charger as long as it has a 5 inch intake and a T4 flange. You'll also get a charge air cooler tube and a 5 inch air intake with provisions for your mass airflow and temperature sensors. You get a 4 inch stainless steel exhaust down pipe and since the charger sits up so high close to that coolant expansion tank we chose to upgrade to the fleece fabricated expansion tank and we got everything powder coated in illusion cherry to match the theme we have going on with the rest of the truck. Our installation starts by doing a little bit of plumbing. Since the new turbo isn't water cooled there are a few ports which have to be blocked off. The cylinder head gets an NPT plug and the block gets an 18 millimeter o-ring fitting. Next, we're going to remove the stock AC lines to make room for the new position of the turbo. And of course, we had the system properly evacuated before we started. The coolant standpipe is now removed from the water pump and gets replaced with a provided AN adapter and bolted in place. Now we'll remove the passenger side battery from the truck and loosen the tray to gain access to the coolant tank. The stock plastic tank can be reused, but it sits really close to the hot turbine housing, so we chose to upgrade and avoid a potential future problem. With the battery box on the bench, we have to grind down these two bosses flush with the surface. This will allow the mount tabs on the fleece tank to engage, and a single bolt secures everything in an existing hole. Now we'll install the AC fittings onto the firewall, remove the studs and install fitting adapters onto the condenser, and do the same thing on the compressor. Then the new lines can be routed, keeping the hoses far away from any sources of heat. The new heater hose attaches to the block adapter, and the other end onto the heater core. The stock turbo drain line is removed from the block, and with the new adapter lubed up, the drain line slides right into the original hole. Finally, the turbo feed fitting gets swapped to the AN adapter, the battery tray and coolant tank slides back into place, and the new lines are protected from heat with the provided insulation. Next, turbo time. 